I'm happy to see most of the world is rallying behind Ukraine and hopefully they can win their war with Russia. While Russia is a minor trading partner for the United States, the world is seeing and feeling the effects of this war with energy prices and oil prices skyrocketing. Ukraine is definitely the underdog and hopefully they can get the support they need before it is too late. And while many countries are sending military aid to Ukraine, no country is sending the troops, which is what Ukraine needs to fight a war when they are outgunned and outmanned. Right now, this is a war of attrition and time Time is not on Ukraine's side. The Russian currency dropped about 30% this week against the US dollar after Western nations, the EU, and the UK moved to block some Russian banks from the SWIFT international payment system, and this and other sanctions have Russians rushing to the banks to pull out cash and may provide a run on the banks and a lot of pressure from the Russian citizens to end the war. And that brings us to the subject of Russian sanctions. First, we have to acknowledge there are a lot of BS loopholes with the sanctions, and that goes hand in hand with government corruption. But even with all of the loopholes and corruption, I'm going to share with you why these sanctions are effective if Ukraine can hold on long enough to save their country. The question is, who does Vladimir Putin answer to? I'll give you three choices. Number one, do you think he is a freely elected leader that answers to the people? Number two, do you think he is a dictator that only answers to himself? Or number three, do you think he may answer to the Russian mob and oligarchs? The sanctions are targeting the oligarchs and this is a way to put more pressure on those that control Russia. Remember, in politics, we always want to follow the money and you can bet the money is flowing heavily to the Russian mob and oligarchs. But I believe the real reason why the sanctions will work revolves around money laundering. The way money laundering works is in a nutshell, you have to wash the money and by cutting off the swift payments, you are preventing the money from going offshore where it is needed to support lavish lifestyles, run other business operations and purchase clean assets. If the money is stuck in Russia, you are screwed because stockpiling money that loses 30% of its value in one day and then continues to lose more value has zero appeal. We already have two Russian oligarchs going on the record calling for an end to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and I'm willing to bet that Putin is feeling the pressure from people he does not want to piss off. And that's my theory on the real reason why the sanctions will be effective against Russia if we have enough time for them to work. Let's hope Ukraine gets the support they need to win the war. Now that we've covered the sanctions, let's close by taking a look at a few of our stock trades and how we are playing the current market. We're now in our Discord, and you're welcome to join us if you want to get all of our different trade alerts. On the left-hand side, you can see a lot of the different channels we've got. We've got uh, some of our trade alerts here, trade alerts for diamonds. We've got member alerts. And then we also have trades winning. And this is where members report their trades. So we've got Luisa. The beauty of this discord, not only do we get an amazing hot stocks list, trade alerts and indicators from Jerry, we get the input of a huge community of smart, experienced traders. I'm up 34% on BPT, a stock I got into when one of our awesome moderators was beating the drum about energy and oil over a month ago. And that awesome moderator was Peggy. And that's a real nice gain of 34%. Next, we've got Reason, King Nasher, shorted Ethereum again for a 5% gain, literally just applying what I learned from Jerry into crypto. Then we've got Dwayne F, Tesla call for a day trade, 60% gain for $1,872 of profit. Very well done, Dwayne. We've got Reeks Havoc. Thanks, Jerry. I bought a CVX, that's Chevron call. It got one of Jerry's famous JR1 signals already up, and that was a JR1 signal from yesterday. He's already up 18.06% on it. Not bad for one day. And again, that's our JR1 signal. It's one of the buy signals we give. And then we've got Air Tractor. Took profit on a swing trade in X, which is a steel company, and a real quick day trade on IPI. It's been a good month to be a commodity investor. It's very encouraging to see the decoupling from the market at large. So here we can see a 26.89% gain on US Steel, which is X, a 21.16% gain, and then a 9.07% gain on Intrepid Potash in Incorporated. Not too bad for one day. And let's take a look at Chevron, which is ticker CVX that we bought an option on yesterday. Looking at our change bar at the top, we can see in one week they're up 7.9%. Over three months, they're up 26%. In one year, they're up 41%. Our recommended trail stop is 7%, and we can see they also pay a 3.9% dividend yield. Looking at the chart, they're in a really nice upward trend. We've got the 20-day EMA, which is this light blue line, and we've got the 50-day EMA, which is a light red line. This forms what I call the train tracks. And anytime we got a train tracks going up, that means we're in a real nice upward trend. And a real simple way to buy when a stock is trending up is to buy whenever it comes down and touches the 20 or the 50 day moving day average and moves back up. Then if we come down and look at our indicators, we've got the momentum dream indicator. And I love to buy on this whenever we're near the zero line, which are these dots right at the bottom. And especially when we've got a squeeze going on, which is represented by these red dots. And if we look at the indicator at the bottom here, it tells us the MOMO, which is momentum is up. So we'd like to buy it with 
upward momentum. And we can see right here, we had real nice upward momentum. And then we also like to buy whenever it's in a squeeze, which are these red dots. And yesterday it's telling us that the squeeze fired. So if we come right over here, we can see the red dots, then it changed to yellow. And then right up here at the top, we've got a little green triangle and that's the squeeze firing. So let's go back and see the last time we had a squeeze firing right here, the squeeze fired, and then it was off to the races. Next up, we can see we had another squeeze fire right here. Then it was off to the races. And right now we've got a squeeze firing and we're off to the races again. And that's what we want to see. And if we come down to the buy sell indicator, the same thing. I love to buy whenever we're green on green. So if we've got green on the top and we pick up a buy signal, even better. So here, same thing happened. And then we had a couple more buy signals. Love it on the green on green. And right now we don't have a buy signal yet, but one may be coming. And then just for fun, let's take a look at the J5 indicator. So there we've got that. We'll size this down. And now we've got our short term trend is bullish. And this tells me over the last six months, we've had 16 trades on this. 13 were winning trades, three were losing trades, and it had a profit factor of 6.43, which is very high with an 81% win rate. So I love to look at this just as one other way to confirm how the stock is doing. And we might be getting a buy signal on this in the near future as well. We can also see we would have had a 24.5% ROI following these buy signals, which is really good. And if you're interested in getting the J5 dashboard, I got a free trial on it. That link is down below. As always, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want our trade alerts, indicators, free stocks, and free crypto, check out the links down below. Peace, and I'll see you on the next video.